Hey guys, this is Adrian in from Odeo yet again, and you guessed it, we are still covering the basics of Adobe After Effects, and today we're going to be going over masks and shape layers and the differences between them. And you may not actually know what either of those are, but that's okay because I'm going to be starting from scratch and assuming that you don't. So let's go ahead and get started. I already have a composition. Now let's dive into what masks are first because they're a little less complicated. So let's say you have a layer here. Oh, first you need to click on your composition work area and go to layer, new, solid. So let's say you have a solid and you want to turn it into a shape or you want to cut part of it off. This is what masks are generally good for. Um, I would think of them as ways to crop out parts of a layer or a footage elements, just ways to cut out certain aspects of your asset. So for instance, we have a layer and I'll head up to this top toolbar here and you'll see this shape. And if you click and hold, you'll see a variety of options, the rectangle tool, rounded rectangle, ellipse. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and click the rounded rectangle. Now when you click on your solid and drag, you'll see that it creates a shape for you. And with the rounded corners, you can actually edit that by using your mouse scroll wheel. And you can make them bigger or smaller. If you don't have a mouse scroll wheel, you can use your arrow keys. It just is going to take a lot longer to get where you want to go. So you let go and it creates this mask shape. Now, the layer has this uh, new twirl down for the mask. And these are the basic options that you're going to have. Mask path, feather, opacity, and expansion. So the path is simply the outline of the mask. The feather controls the softness of the edges, in case you want more of a gradient type look. And the opacity is what it sounds like, the transparency of the mask. And the mask expansion is an easy way to extend the border of the mask. So let's say you have this rounded rectangle, but you would like to cut even part of that out. And what's cool is you can actually add several masks to one layer. So go back up to your mask tool and Let's just uh, take the star here. Now if we click and drag, oh, you see it's creating a triangle because our sides are low. So if we use our scroll wheel, we can actually increase the sides of the star here. So there, now we have an actual star. So we drag and it's creating a new mask. And so we have that there. But let's say we wanted to actually cut out of the rectangle. And to, to scale like that, all you need to do is um, drag the corner, hold shift, and it will scale proportionally. So let's say we want to cut this star out of the rounded rectangle. Now each mask layer in its twirl down is going to have these options here. And this is add, subtract, intersect, light, and darken. Now these are ways that you can actually control what the mask is going to do when they overlap. So right now we just have it adding, which means that it's just going to be creating more of the orange solid. So if we go and select our star layer and click subtract, you'll see that it cuts out of the layer below it. Now if we switch to these, it's not going to work because it's subtracting from nothing. So the order of these masks do matter in, in terms of what they're going to do. So that's the basics of masks. Now you may be wondering what are shape layers. Now Adobe introduced shape layers as a much more convenient and versatile way to create shapes. So you don't have to be doing it by cutting out solids and whatnot. So in order to create a shape layer, you're actually going to be using the same toolbar, but instead of selecting a solid, you just simply choose your shape, go to your composition window and drag. And you'll notice already that it's very different. Um, you can still use your mouse scroll wheel to change the amount of sides to the shape. And then let go to go ahead and create it. So the shape layers have several options that help you customize this shape and do all sorts of unique effects to it. You can see already that it has a stroke built in, which you can toggle on and off here in the layer. Same with the fill. And there's several options here for you to be able to customize that. If you twirl them down, you can see we have control over the opacity of the stroke, um, rounded joints, and you can also add dashes if you click this plus sign here which adds a cool effect. You can also rotate those around. You can increase the stroke width. So as you can see, there's lots of new elements of control on these shape layers. Um, and there's even a whole nother level. If you head to this top arrow here uh, that says add, there's even more effects that you can apply to these shape layers. For instance, let's go ahead and click pucker and bloat. 
And you'll see already we have some changes. Now go ahead and twirl that effect down. And we just have one control, we have a mount. But that's going to add some very interesting looks to your shape. I'm going to go ahead and turn my stroke down. So you can see more of the blue. And you can easily toggle this effect on and off by clicking this eyeball on the left side here. So another cool effect that you can add is the repeater. Now this is a nice way to create several copies of your shape without having to deal with multiple layers. So you can create multiple copies, offset it, and with this new set of transform options here, you can actually control the look of the copies, which is a nice way to create some interesting looks that look a lot more complicated than they actually are. So as you make adjustments to these properties, you can see that it's just changing it over time rather than making it exact for all of the copies, which uh, allows for some pretty interesting looks. Now you can easily delete these effects by selecting them and pressing delete on your keyboard. Now even though we already chose the amount of sides to the shape, you can still edit that here when you twirl down your path options. You'll see this points area. Just drag that number up and you can increase the number of sides to your shape. If you mess with the inner and outer radius, you'll see you can control how far the points extend outward or retract inwards. So the possibilities are pretty much endless. Uh, you can control the roundness of the shape as well. Well guys, that's the basics of masks and shape layers. If you have any questions or I fail to cover a certain area, feel free to ask it in the comment box and I will get to it as soon as I can. Now be sure to join us next time as we actually get into the basics of animation, applying everything that we've learned so far to make things move, which is the funnest part of After Effects, so you don't want to miss it. So, I hope to see you then.